Bullshit. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. Our guest today is Mike Gaddy, the first ever employee of Mass Solutions, has been there the entire time of the company. As we celebrate our 12th anniversary with this, this show, Mike is our head of marketing operations and so much more. He really makes it happen at the company, and he's been there and knows all the history. In the first episode of this special anniversary week uh, of the podcast, Mike talked about marketing intel, and a quick recap, he talked about how important it is to talk to your customers, your employees, your referral sources through qualitative subject of phone calls. He talked about how important secret shopping or mystery shopping can be so you can see and hear what your customers see and hear. He talked about the importance of a marketing audit, which includes a brand audit and a messaging audit. So Mike, let's move forward now. The intel at Mass Solutions has been done for a client. What happens next? Well, typically we get paid and, and head out and say goodbye. Now we usually end up, uh, one of the things that we've always adjusted and, and has been a challenge since the beginning of the company is deliverables. And I think it's challenging for any marketing firm because what is the ideal deliverable? Well, it's different for every client. Some clients want, you know, more is more. Other clients want a one page brief. Other clients want a deck. So, you know, that's something we've really toyed with over the years. And the only way to really figure it out is just through experience. There's no, you, I mean, you can ask people what they want. And the fact is, a lot of people don't really know what they want. So they're looking on our expertise and our experience to come back and say, here's the information in the best possible manner <laughs> and so you know what happens is and one rule we have at mass solutions that we've developed over the years is that we have we're never again will a deliverable be sent to a client that's just disaster written all over it because it has to be presented you know we've put a bunch of time man hours uh, resources into this so why we would ever email deliverable. I don't know why, but what we were thinking. <laughs> that's one of the things you learn. Bullshit. Yeah, exactly. It's some bullshit, but that's just what, you know, you learn that over the years and that's, that's how you get better is through experience well, and I, screw ups. <laughs> I, yes. And I think that there's a big challenge in our industry for us and anybody that does this is that there, there's not a clear definition of what marketing is and the pure definition that we use about doing marketing intel, clearly defining your target audiences, finding out what they want, delivering it to them when and where they want it at a price they're willing to pay and then telling them about it again and again is not the same definition that other people who claim to be marketing firms but maybe are no BS or actually BS marketing firms because they're focusing on that, telling them about it again and again. So I think that's one problem is when we come in to talk to a client, they often have a preconceived definition of marketing that is only a piece of what we mm -hmm. as marketing purists believe it to be. So talk about how after the intel is done, there's some other things done as far as messaging and a, a roadmap deliverable. Yeah, so what after, you know, internally, what one of the things that we do is we like to define a company or a client's messaging inventory. A lot of times, and that's all stuff we learn through the intel calls and through the, the audit because we're seeing the words that are written and we're hearing what, what all of the different internal people are saying and we're hearing what the clients and referral sources are saying. So what we like to do is, is create a messaging inventory and just the sheer volume and variety you see in all of the words that are being spoken describing the company or its services is usually pretty overwhelming. They don't... Less is more in this, you know, in the information age that we live in. So it's really about boiling down the two whys that Dave always talks about. And I think, you know, that's our focus. So what we do is we come back and have an internal session and start building messaging pillars. And, and that could be one. It could be two. It could be three. You know, it could probably be up to five. We've never had that many. But those have to be your main basic big ideas of the company's reason for existence. And th that's what all of your other messaging is really going to feed off of and, and stem from because it all has to come back to one, uh, one or two big ideas or else you're just going to get lost in the, uh, 
and the shuffle and the and all of the the information at least your customers are going to get lost the messaging inventory mike we had that one example talk about it when we showed them the snapshot after we did it on the our, our, our strategic glass of oh yeah yeah you know when you it's again it's just the sheer volume you write down all of these things and you realize that a lot of these people are saying the same thing in just such a vastly different way that it's almost frightening because it could be misperceived in so many different ways by the client or by their end users or their customers. So it's a great exercise, I think, to show the client too, uh, even though they're usually not there, sometimes they are, but just to send them a picture, you know, it's a good touch point too, uh, to practice what we preach. But so you end up saying, here's 39 ways this was said because you have seven salespeople, two directors that's out talking to people, a VP and the CEO. Those 12 people are all saying this differently, plus eight employees are saying it differently, and two of your collaterals are saying it differently, and so is your website and your tweets. Yeah. So then I think that's really an eye-opener. As marketers, we always get put into this uh, subjective box, so it's, it's tough, but that's really inarguable as far as hey, there's an easier way to say this <laughs> in a more consistent way to say this. And that's part of the whole process with the intel and the messaging. And so the now roadmap. you talked about messaging inventory, then messaging pillars, which is us transforming their messaging and then go into the roadmap. So then the roadmap is, um, you know, that's going to be a way for our clients to clearly see what direction they need to go as far as from a marketing standpoint. And, you know, of course, marketing spills over into all the all, all the different avenues of, of, of the company as far as it, it's going to spill into operations, HR, IT to a, to a degree, all of that, you know, because a lot of, of, of marketing too is internal marketing to your own team and as well as uh, recruiting and retention. Um, it's such a hyper competitive job market now. Excuse me, that's almost impossible for our clients to not be constantly recruiting for talent just because of of turnover and it sounds stupid but the you know just with all of the flow of information it's so it's I think it's easier to go get a job and talk to someone that you never would have spoke to before because you'd have to somehow get your hard copy resume in the hands of some guy that has two secretaries and does, you know so it was almost impossible now you just go find them on linkedin and message them 28 times until he <laughs> responds or whatever you know the case may be so so on one hand um you know our clients need to be constantly recruiting and that's part of the messaging that we build for them and then they need to be messaging internally to their own employees as well and and that that's where the roadmap really helps to kind of define those targets define the message that needs to be said to them and then also define the tactics that can be used to effectively implement these uh, initiatives and you know a lot of the tactics not maybe not a lot we try to at least have half of the tactics be implementable by the client because the people that we work with that we target and want to work with don't have uh, huge implementation budgets. So we feel it's wiser for them to spend their resources on the strategy and then work as a true partner with us for implementation as opposed to just being a, a vendor um, or you know someone that they kind of point in the direction and say, go do this. That's really not how we work and not the clients that we want. The No BS Marketing Podcast with Dave Mastovich is brought to you by Mass Solutions. Put our three-step No BS process to work for you. Visit MassSolutions.biz today to take your marketing to another level. It's all about bold solutions, No BS. You're listening to the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich, of also the CEO of Mass Solutions. And Mass Solutions is celebrating our 12th anniversary, which is why our guest is Mike Gaddy, who is the first ever employee of Mass Solutions. And I'm getting hand signals from both Mike and Suzanne, so I'm going to try to 
keep this as focused as possible. Mike, a couple quick questions. <laughs> Talk about a learning experience uh, when maybe you were a BS employee uh, or maybe your communication wasn't what it needed to be. Looking back, when do you think you might have been guilty of some BS? How did you learn from it and how can it help our audience? Oh, I, I don't have enough time for all that. Honestly, the uh, I'm learn I learn every day how to communicate better. I mean, there's so many different levels of communication, especially at a marketing firm, and especially whenever I was here since the inception. So I've had the fortunate um, experience of being able to communicate with everyone from interns up to CEOs and senior vice presidents and all wide range of different people and everyone is different. So you have to communicate with them differently. I'm trying to think back like specific examples, like one of my, I'm an email guy. So like I always constantly fall back on email to a fault. So, you know, it's, I learned early on, you can't just send an email and go, well, I sent an email. They didn't respond. I'm, you know, it's, it's not my problem now. A couple times where we've had like mis I'm thinking back to an old education client. We had, uh, it was for a cyber school and we had like all these emails back and forth, back and forth. And somehow we were supposed to have this meeting at our Johnstown office one day and neither of us went. We didn't know. And he showed up <laughs> and he was mad because he had driven to Johnstown. But it was one of those things that I should have just picked up the phone and said, Hey, are we still on? And I never heard back from him. And I just emailed. So I'm like, well, he didn't respond to my email, so it must be canceled. And that was just a, a silly assumption to make. Another thing probably is whenever we, um, again, when we, going back to the mystery shopping, oh God, the stuff I learned from mystery shoppers, never assume anything. <laughs> if someone isn't responding to you, they're probably avoiding you. <laughs> Which is seems kind of obvious at the time, but again, when you're out trying to recruit mystery shoppers and you have to get a hundred shops done by the end of the month, and someone said they're going to do a shop, like you know in the back of your mind, oh, they didn't answer my phone call or didn't do my email, so you have to have a backup to the backup to the backup, and that's something that you always stress, and I think that I've learned over the years is like there always has to be a plan B and probably a plan C, especially when you're dealing with you know, technology or something where there's a margin of error. So those are a couple examples. That's good stuff. Well, pick a tool. I have some more if you want. No, <laughs> we want you to pick a tool or a tip. Pick a tool or a tip you'd offer that will help our audience tell their story, craft their message, or communicate to internal and external target audiences. Whatever you think might help our listeners. Well, there's a couple different ones. I mean, there's a lot of real-time communication tools out there tool that everyone uses to do real-time communication no that's what we use yeah but it's a specific tool i can't remember what it is at the time but i'll have david smith our audio guy add me saying it in later because <laughs> <laughs> because we're no bs so yes um one tool that we use internally is glip um, it's a collaboration tool that allows us to speak real time with everyone on the team, regardless of location. And it ends up really helping with uh, just kind of clarifying stuff that really can't be done via email because, you know, someone's on the road, so they email back and then they, you know, forward you a string of emails and you're trying to look through it all. So we use it a lot with our creatives um, that we have on staff because it's just, and it's fun, you know, for them and us, you know, people are posting funny GIFs, GIFs, GIFs. They're not GIFs, they're GIFs. They're GIFs. Yeah. We went over that, just like Latrobe, Latrobe. Um, you know, or, or post a funny meme or whatever. And it just adds a little bit of uh, a little break, I guess, in the uh, a mundane uh, reading and sorting of emails throughout the day. And plus, it's just really effective if you need a quick edit done to a piece and say, hey, can you just switch this email or swap these two things out real quick? You can actually go on and annotate uh, an actual PDF right on the screen and put notes and, and annotations on it. So, And that's a, a nice tool, I guess, that we use internally, and that's Glip. 
glip.com. They were recently purchased by Ring Central, which is a voiceover IP. We used to use them too. Yeah, we did. We now use phone.com. One other tool I like is Overcast for for podcast listening. I don't know. It just it's a better U, UI than the podcast app. It seems to sync better Bluetooth with my car for whatever reason. That I might agree be with that too. That might be a lie, but I, yeah. this I, I have no data to back that up except for my experience. And then just silly things like it doesn't take up space. It, it streams the the podcast or downloads them in chunks instead of downloading the whole episode. And if you're like me, I'm con- it's a struggle for me to constantly find space on my iPhone because I have two young children. So it's just like a thousand unnecessary photos that just take up a bunch of space. And then I go try to take a photo and it says I'm out of space. And then we miss the moment. So... I remember those days when I had to take those crazy pictures. Yeah, and you honestly, you really never even look at any of them. No. <laughs> no. It's just like the wedding video. Yeah. Suzanne's yeah. T- trying to take a picture <laughs> of this drone. She struggling. just dropped her phone. She fumbled her phone. She's all frazzled. Hey. <laughs> and dropped the, the, the headphones. Overcast also has a couple other cool features. Yeah, it takes out the dead, the dead air and like the, um, you know, the, the one feature that I use the most that, I don't know if anyone even uses is the the skip feature. Like yes. you can skip back thirty seconds or forward thirty seconds with one of the buttons. Which, if you've ever experienced the podcast app, you have to like get your finger and it's put it hard. on the bar, and then you jump like seven minutes ahead yes. as opposed to where you wanted to go. So that's a huge, huge benefit. I have lunch in five minutes. Okay, well, here's what we're going to do. It's time <laughs> to keep calm and hit the bullseye. All right. I'll ask you to choose between two marketing or messaging classics. Tell me which one you like more. Give me your reason, but you only have a few seconds to choose and hit the bullseye. And I did this special for Mike. All right, I'm ready. Go Geico's Gecko or the Aflac Duck? Um, Geico's Gecko. It's just they've done, they have so many brand mascots that they've developed over the years that I just give it to them. No, I know what his answer is going to be on this one. Right. Google or Apple? Oh, yeah. Well, I guess 10 years ago it would have been Google. Um, I did get an iPhone, so I'm like part of the problem, <laughs> not the solution. <laughs> but I, I still would give the nod to uh, Google. I feel they're not as high and mighty as Apple. Apple has that snobbiness to them that I think they've lost it a little bit, which has actually lost some of their allure. To the hipsters. <laughs> We've had a couple of hipsters on the show. Yeah. Well, one or two. <laughs> so that's Mike Gaddy. He's, uh, he's here with Mass Solutions, first ever Mass Solutions employee. It's our 12th anniversary this month, and uh, we're in the bullseye. So, Mike, this is your brain. This is your brain on drugs, or just say no. Oh, this is your brain on drugs. What was her name? Uh, who redid, they redid those commercials, I think, with Jennifer Jace, Jennifer Conley or Jason Lee. One of those Jennifers. Weren't they in the original one? I think so. Yeah, the what, Crack in the Eggs. I Jennifer so. Jason Lee is who it would have been. Jennifer Conley. Yeah, yeah no, Jennifer Jason Lee. Yeah, I'm, I Michelle's think sp- that you might want to fact check that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is your brain on drugs. But one of my, actually my favorite no drugs commercial from the... I guess the Reagan war on drugs is the one where the, the dad and he, the, he comes in and with this box, it's like a box of drugs. It's like funny. Cause there's just a box that has like random colored pills and like different stuff in it. And he's, he taught you this. He's like, I learned it from watching you dad. You. Yeah. And I'm thinking where, what's going on at this house? Like is the dad just like, you know, popping pills, popping every pills day. and you know, on the on the di- dining room table, and <laughs> just was like, oh, he doesn't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so that Stick was the always, line in front of the, yeah, the kids. That was always my favorite uh, <laughs> drug you, commercial. You. Yeah, I learned it from watching you, Dad. Okay, it's about messaging, and and so it's two nicknames, and it's Mike Sarah of the Steelers. We all have our era. I've been a fan my whole life, but the the era when you were uh, a teenager is probably the biggest one preteen and teenagers so it is 
Cordell Slash Stewart or Byron Bam Morris both had quick ri- meteoric rises and precipitous falls? Um, I'd have to go with Bam Morris from a, a messaging standpoint. Cordell had his ups and downs in Pittsburgh, and so we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Bam is uh, free. Oh, yeah. He's he, free. He went to jail for a he was supposed to be in for 10 and he got out early in 2004 yeah Yeah. that goes back to our don't do drugs psa don't strap 50 pounds of marijuana marijuana (laughs) underneath your car or whatever he was the guy he was the dad he was taking (laughs) home to show his kids say who did this bartles and james thank you for your support or pardon me do you have any gray poupon oh a gray poupon i don't even remember that bartles and james one by far you remember the Grey Poupon one's been parodied probably more than <laughs> the original. So, yeah, definitely the Grey Poupon. You can re- you recall that guy rolling down the window. Yes. That's Mike Gaddy, head of marketing operations here at Mass Solutions, also the historic first employee. We celebrated our 12th anniversary with these two episodes. Mike, how can listeners contact you if they'd like to learn more about what you do? Because we know you want to really interact with as many people as possible. Yeah. Oh, um, I have a private email. <laughs> you can contact me through Suzanne Mayer. No. Her email is Suzanne at MassSolutions.biz. S-U-Z-A-N-N-E at MassSolutions.biz. Or you can actually, you can email me directly. I don't care. I might not answer though. It's gaddy at masssolutions.biz, G-A-T-T-I. <laughs> That's another whole story. I know you have to go, but the gaddy, she has Suzanne. I have Dave and Mike has Mike and then you have gaddy. Yeah. Well, Mike was already taken or we were going to give yeah. it to your brother. So yeah. he is gaddy. Though. Well, everyone's called me that since, you know, I've been in grade school. It's just one of those like, you know. Easy last name, yes. short, so you two can, syllables, and you know that's what you did when your kids called everyone by their last name, because there's like 28 mics in your class. So, Gaddy, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for joining us uh, for the No Bullshit Marketing. Yeah, show. sorry, I have to run to an appointment. I'm already late, but um, if anyone's looking for gift ideas, you can buy me any type of Yeti um, uh, glasses or tumblers or anything like that. I'm, it's my new favorite thing in the world. He has it in his hand. We're going to get a Mass Solutions logo at once, so he's happy. Yes. They're stainless steel. Thank you to our listeners. Uh, f- uh, I wanted to ask you if you could visit BoldSolutionsNoBS.com to get the fact check on the Brain on Drugs and all the other show notes, plus additional marketing and messaging resources. Sign up for light reading. You'll receive valuable strategies every other week to improve your marketing and transform your message. It really is light intended to be read in two minutes or less. And it just might trigger bright ideas for you. Sign up visiting MassSolutions.biz. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold